This is a story called The Death of Miss Smith. Uh, Miss Smith, Miss Viola Smith, uh, she died while teaching. Uh, she died in front of a whole class of students, which it included me. And I'm pretty sure if you were one of the students in that room, you will never forget the death of Miss Smith. Um, Miss Smith, she was the head of the math department, and she was a strong, vigorous woman, kind of built like a brick. Uh, Middle-aged, uh, old enough for her. She had, she had like, thick black hair, kind of sweep, sweeping back, and um, just a little bit of gray in it. And uh, glasses, kind of cat, cat-eyed glasses, and very forceful personality. I was scared to death of her. Uh, I had two friends in that class, uh, David and Scott. They were scared to death of her. We were all pretty much scared to death of Miss Smith. Uh, some, of, some of the math teachers were uh, coaches. And these coaches, these male coaches, they were scared to death of Miss Smith. Uh, she was that kind of person. Uh, she, she wasn't really mean. She had really a no-nonsense uh, personality. And she was strong and took no prisoners and uh, you know did not tolerate weakness or foolishness at, at all. Uh, and in fact, uh, she was so scary that my friends uh, David and uh, Scott and I, we, we tried to escape her. We tried to get, get out of her class. We, we just couldn't stand having every single class day, having to be in her room for an entire hour and be scared that an entire hour. Not just scared, but you know, we would feel stupid. I mean, it was calculus. It was, we, we were just too stupid to learn calculus, we thought. So we followed around uh, the principal. The principal is this kind of pudgy, mild-mannered guy named Mr. Gibson. And uh, he saw us, so we were scared to actually approach him, you know, the principal. So uh, finally he noticed he was being stalked by three young men. I don't, I don't know, we were like 16. And um, what do you guys want? Come come here. What do you, are you following me? What do you want? And so we pushed Scott, in front, David and I pushed Scott in front of us. And, you know, so Scott told him, you know, please, we're too stupid for that class. We got to get out of that class. Please, please let us out of that class. He did the worst imaginable thing. He, he got on the phone and he called her up. He called up Miss Smith. Said, Miss Smith, I got three of your kids down here in my office. Why don't you come down here? Oh, my God. No, 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 no. So, uh, you know, she comes down there and, you know, we had to follow her back to her office and she gave us a special lesson you know and, and we found out the truth which is that no one can escape Miss Smith. Well one day um, in her class um, uh, as usual she was wearing one of those kind of managed blue suits and uh, it was kind of smeared with chalk. She always had chalk smeared on her you know this sort of thick fabric, dark fabric she would wear, and then in her hair and everything, just chalk all over. And um, uh, she was trying to explain some kind of complicated math problem, and we were trying to pretend we actually understood what the hell she was talking about. And all of a sudden, she, she turned around and she looked at us. It was a very odd look that I, I cannot duplicate it and I cannot explain it. It was, it was like, I don't know, she was listening to some distant music maybe. And she had her hand up holding a stick of chalk. And she said, you'll have to excuse me. I don't feel very well. And she fell over backwards. Just wham! She, her head hit the chalk, the chalk tray. And, you know, so hard that like sticks of chalk just leapt up in the air and fell, fell to the floor. And we were just astonished. Uh, there she is sitting on the floor, kind of sitting, kind of sprawled against the wall. Uh, her, her glasses are all funny and uh, her eyes are open and it's like time stops. You know that cliche, time stops where we don't know what to do. I have no idea what to do. Miss Smith, what has happened? I, you know. And finally, uh, one boy, his father is a doctor at the local hospital, and he just jumps up. We're glad that somebody is doing something, but instead of going to uh, Miss Smith, he just runs out of the room as fast as he can. And we're all, it kind of creates a little energy, and we're sort of looking at each other. We don't, should we approach her? Should, you know, what, what to do, what to do? Um, it's like I'm in a spell. I, I cannot take my eyes off of her. She's Her dress is kind of hiked up. I can kind of see where her stockings stop and her white thighs start. Uh, she's a heavy woman. Um, 
I can't tell if she's breathing. She's not moving. I'm I'm just frozen. Uh, finally, the door. We hear really loud running footsteps, and the door to our room flies open, and in comes uh, Mr. K. Mr. K is the vice principal. He's in charge of discipline. He's six foot six. He used to be a U.S. Marine. I'm even more terrified of him than I am of Miss Smith. He once gave me indefinite detention. He he looks at her and he runs right up to her and he kneels over her. And I can't believe it. He's given her mouth to mouth resuscitation. I don't know why I found that so deeply shocking. It was sort of like kissing. It was like some kind of vampire thing. I, I was just shocked. I, I really had no idea how to feel. I, I you know, I was only 16 years old. I, I just never had been through anything remotely like this. Uh, finally, he, he turns around and he looks at us and he says, get out, get out, get out of here. All of you get out of here. And it's like the spell is broken where I, I'm, I'm extremely relieved to get out of that room. And I, everybody, we all file out of there and and uh, now we're full of energy, and we're it was it's like an unheard of thing. We are we are wandering around a whole class full of students, you know, the smart kids in the smart class, and we're wandering around in the halls, completely unsupervised during class time. And um, now I'm just talking a mile a minute. You know what happened? Is she okay? Oh my God, I think she'll be okay. She must have fainted, or oh man, I was did you could you man did you see that chalk? It was just woo, and. Um, Finally, it's, uh, you know, the bell rings, it's time for the next class, and all the kids come pouring out, and, you know, and I'm, I'm telling people what happened. All of a sudden, I realize I, I got to get to my history class. I have to take a, a test, and it's one of those open book tests, and so I, I realize, oh, my God, all my stuff, all my books are back there in Miss Smith's class. I think, oh, my God, I wonder if she's still laying there on the floor, you know, so I, I, go, I go back there, and uh, the door is locked, and I can see my stuff in there sitting on my desk, but I, I can't get it, so I, I, and Miss Smith, of course, is gone, and somebody tells me, you know, an ambulance came, and she was taken away in an ambulance, and I, um, I go to I go to my history class, and I, I just, I don't know how to process, I don't know how to process my feelings. And I finally, I put my head on my desk, and the teacher notices this, and he comes over to me, you okay, what's the matter? And I, I tell him I was in the room, you know, and Miss Smith collapsed and fell, and she's been taken to the hospital. And he, he looks at me for a little bit, very, very sad, and in a really sad, soft voice, he says, Miss Smith has passed away. And I was shocked. I mean, I thought that was impossible. How, she was like a force of nature. How could Miss Smith be dead. That was the most shocking thing I think anyone had ever said to me. We found out later that um, she was a lesbian. Uh, her lifelong partner had died just like like a week earlier. Um, that news, it kind of put a romantic glamour over her that seemed impossible almost to me that she had died for love in a way. She, she had always loved teaching, and she had died while teaching, and she had died just a week after the love of her life died first. Miss Smith, rest in peace.